I'm going to give you a little advice on poison ivy. Now, if you're watching this video and you see how much poison ivy I have, you're probably sitting there thinking, how is this guy going to give me advice on poison ivy? Well, poison ivy, number one, is not all that bad to have on your property and it's very good for the environment. The other thing is that poison ivy on this property was all over the place. So we've actually cleared a lot of poison ivy to make the, the property safer for our kids. The poison ivy has an oily wax, and in that oily wax is a toxin called uroshoil. Uroshoil is basically, an, it, if it gets on your skin, it, it causes rashes, and some people are more susceptible to it than others. I can generally brush up against poison ivy and it not affect me. But if I'm out working in it and I'm breaking up a lot of stuff, then I get some of those and I really get into those oils, I'll get some rashes on my skin. So I don't think that anybody can say that they're, they don't get poison ivy. Everybody does. It's just to the extent that you get it uh, depends on your skin type, really. Poison ivy comes in leaves of three. It can be hard to identify against other plants on your property for kiddos, so what we normally tell our children is leaflets of three, let it be. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to help give you some identification uh, signs that will tell you for sure if something is poison ivy. Poison ivy will grow in two different ways. One is a crawling vine that shoots up shoots out of the ground. Those shoots can be easily mistaken for small tree saplings coming up out of the ground. But generally, if you see a lot of poison ivy in an area, you'll see that they are growing out of uh, a layer of vines that are coming across the bottom of the ground. Poison ivy, for the most part, in our area is a vine. It can also, in some areas, look like a bush. The other way poison ivy grows is in a crawling vine, where it goes up a tree. The crawling vine is generally really hairy looking. So if it's winter time and you see a vine up a tree that looks really hairy with a lot of shoots coming out of it, that's likely poison ivy. Depending on how old the poison ivy vine is, those shoots could actually look like branches of the tree coming out. We have an oak tree that looks like it has a lot of lower end branches that need to be cut off. That's actually a very thick poison ivy vine going up the tree. And the shoots that are coming off that vine are thicker than my thumb in some cases. When poison ivy is first growing, uh, it actually looks a little red on the tips. So in early spring, a lot of the poison ivy that you'll see will look almost reddish in color. Poison ivy leaves, uh, we generally think of as being relatively small, but I have poison ivy leaves on our property that are as big as my foot. There's really not a shape or size that you can attribute to poison ivy. Each leaf tends to come to a point on the tip, although some of the larger leaves look a little more rounded and can be a little confusing. When you're looking at the poison ivy compound of three leaflets, the center leaflet it has, usually has a longer stalk than the two side leaflets. Poison ivy also bears a fruit, and before that fruit is a fruit, it's a flower. So you can identify poison ivy from the white flowers that it produces, and then, of course, the little berry fruits. A lot of people just think of poison ivy as a vine with three leaves, or a plant with three leaves, and they don't know that it has flowers, or berries, or all these other things. The flowers and the berries are actually very valuable to the animals that come to your property. Over 60 species of birds in North Carolina actually eat the, the berries that are in poison ivy, which is one of the reasons why poison ivy is so prominent along fence lines where, uh, and under trees where, where birds tend to roost, because where they roost is also where they go. So they're kind of recycling those seeds back down into your property. It's almost impossible to keep poison ivy completely from growing on your property without an herbicide. But we're going to go over some of those techniques in a few minutes. Other animals that depend on poison ivy are the rabbits. Rabbits like to eat the poison ivy stalks and the poison ivy bark. Deer also eat the fruits of poison ivy and the foliage. A lot of animals depend on poison ivy because poison ivy continues to produce a valuable food source to animals until about midwinter. 
it's really, and then it comes back in early spring. It's really only dormant for a short period of time. So poison ivy isn't necessarily a bad thing for the environment. And most of the animals that are native to the area aren't susceptible to the toxins within poison ivy. Poison ivy is uniquely toxic to humans. Removing poison ivy is not an easy task. In cases where we need to make sure that the poison ivy goes away and stays away because our kids are playing in that area, I like to use a chemical called Grazon Next. Grazon Next is a woody weed herbicide that stays in the ground season long. Now this is just an example. Um, the poison ivy that you see along the edge here is real thick. Uh, it is just all over the side of this uh, fence row. And the part that you see that's cleared here to the right, that is using the Grazon Next application. We just sprayed it once and it completely removed every weed, um, including the poison ivy that was there. Uh, and you can see that the grass is still able to grow where the Grazon Next was. Um, nice thing about Grazon Next is it is not a um, pretreatment, so you could seed this for grass and grass would grow. Uh, this is just an area that we've been working on. We want to be able to get in here and remove everything on this fence line, but uh, I had to clear a lot just to get to the fence line, which is why the fence line hasn't, we haven't started on it yet, but the the effects of the Grazon Next herbicide in this spot uh, are huge. I mean, they literally stop the poison ivy almost in a straight line. This is pretty much what this looked like before we sprayed the Grazon Next. Same kind of thing. It's a flat area that I just drove the tractor right through, sprayed, and voila, it's gone. You can also remove poison ivy naturally. One of the ways that I like to get rid of poison ivy naturally is through burning. The first time you burn off poison ivy, it'll come back up. So the poison ivy that comes back after you burn the first time is weaker, and you can go ahead and burn it again. After maybe two or three burns, you'll find that you'll have actually killed off most of the poison ivy that was in that location. Another way to get rid of poison ivy, or to keep it out of an area that uh, you don't want it growing because of your kids, or even just to help clear poison ivy naturally from a wooded area that you don't want to catch on fire, are goats. Goats like to eat poison ivy. We used to tie our goats up in areas where we had poison ivy, and they will eat the woody weeds like poison ivy before they actually eat the grass. If you decide to burn poison ivy, there are a few things that you need to take into consideration. Because the toxins that are in poison ivy when you touch the leaves go up with the smoke. And so you can actually get poison ivy from the smoke. You can then inhale the poison ivy in the smoke and then get a rash within your lungs and cause some serious problems. Uh, poison ivy can get in your eyes, your mouth. It can get all over you when it becomes smoke form. I know that the Forest Service burns forests out every day with poison ivy in it, but by the time that smoke reaches anybody or a population, it's pretty much lost all of the, uh, the toxins that are in the poison ivy. So here are a few things to take into consideration. Number one, eye protection. Number two, you need to have something around your face, a mask of some sort, to protect you from breathing in the fumes. Number three, you want to make sure that you are upwind from the fire and at a safe distance and you want to make sure that the smoke going downwind is not going in the direction of other people who uh, could be susceptible to the poison ivy toxins. What I like to do is I like to burn the poison ivy during the winter when the poison ivy is dormant. I know it does less damage to the plant and so I'm going to be fighting it longer, but by burning it at that time of year, um, I'm removing the bigger, thicker pieces of the poison ivy killing those off and the next year the poison ivy that comes up is weaker and if I keep the process going each winter eventually I'll remove most of my poison ivy. I think a bird just flew in front of me. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you're interested more about using herbicides and how to apply them, we will be doing a video on how uh, to use a, a sprayer and what kind of sprayer we use on our tractor. So stay tuned to our channel. We've got all sorts of helpful tips coming your way.